Antoine in Chicago. Hey, Antoine, what's up? Am I saying your name right? Yes, you are. Hey, you're on I'm the sorry. air. What's up? How you doing? Good. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, and I mean, I love your show. You, you always make a lot of sense. With you. But, like, I think that thing, when you had guys going, like, on railroad trains to go to other states to find work and whatnot, I mean, that was a time back then. Which, I mean, now I can understand Roosevelt saying what he's saying. But right now, we're in a time literally where you can own your own business you can work as hard as like right now, like me, I don't have a steady, steady job. I don't have a career, but I work three or three jobs, I believe. And I have recreational time in between, but I'm an African-American male and I'm making it happen for myself. So I think the rest of the U S can make it happen for, for themselves. I understand what the guy, the last caller was saying. I totally do. I mean, not in the midst of going to the military and, and, and as harsh as he was, and I'm a liberal, but at the same time, I think that's the only liberal agenda that I don't agree with is the fact that, you know, everybody has to stay behind, you know, or you're allowed to stay behind and collect um, all this money from the government and not work for yourself. I don't understand that. Well, what I'm saying, Antoine, is that I, very, very few people are just sitting around collecting money from the government. The vast majority of people who are on food stamps, the vast majority of people who are on Medicaid are the working poor. And they're and they're the working poor because they can't find better jobs. There's, there's, it's, like, it's like a game of musical chairs. I mean, about half the jobs in America pay so little, in fact, more than half, because it's half the families, and you've got the average family has 1.8 people working now. So they're working one, you know, or working 1.8 jobs. So you've, you've got, you know, maybe two thirds of the jobs in America don't pay enough for, for a family to live on. And so what do you do? I mean, you've got a choice. Either you're going you're gonna to cover that, either the government's going to cover that, or the government's right. going to say to the businesses, if you can't do business in a way that pays a, a, a decent wage, then don't do business. Well, no, it makes sense. But, I mean, at the same time, I mean, I know now, because I looked into it not too long ago, how to go about opening up a business, how to go about buying a storefront and opening a business for yourself, like a, a small, like, candy store or whatever the case may be. But how, whatever. not everybody can do that, Antoine. And, and, you know, good on you for, you know, being smart and being enthusiastic and energetic and, and, and on, you know, Glenn, too, for that matter. And, and in fact, I, I made that point to him. I, you know, uh, I've busted my ass my whole life. I, you know, it's, right. I, I work three jobs and probably an 80 or 90 hour week. But I don't think that that's, you know, that, that any of us have the right to hold ourselves up and say we are the example of how it should all be and that everybody should have to work an 80 hour week. I think there's nothing wrong with somebody saying I would like to work. In fact, I think probably it's better for society and better for families. If the majority of people say, you know, I'd like to work a 40 hour week. I'd like to go home to my kids every night. And I'd like to raise my family and I'd like to have other things to do in my life. Um, you know, I've, I, you know, largely set that aside to be a workaholic. And, you know, I'm very fortunate that I'm married to a woman who shares that workaholism. And, you know, together we do this, all this stuff. But, but you know, I know a lot of people who, who just, you know, I just want to have a job where I can go to work, get my, do my job and make enough, you know, that, that I can live. That work should right. have some basic dignity. You, you know, it's saying everybody in America should go out and start a business. It ain't going to happen. No, of course not. But at the same time, I'm, I'm in the same business as you. My lady, she's a social worker, and she, she makes a nice amount of money. And I do what I can to match what she makes. So I, I am in the same position as you. And I guess I can't speak to the people uh, that are, you know, that are single and I try to make a But It is really hard because I've been, I've been there before. I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes it takes a little extra effort you know, for us all not to be laying down and for us not to be paying for everybody in the nation. I mean, it's more We're than not. for those people that you're talking about. That We're not paying for everybody. Work. We are not paying for everybody. The problem is, the, 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 the twin problems that we have are that the, that the good jobs have gone, many of the good jobs have gone. And, and this is a result of industrial policy and in our trade policy. And, and the, the, the wages for the jobs that are left are, are, you know, are so low that people can't live on them. And, and, and you know, we have not had an increase in the minimum wage in, in I don't know, what, 12 years, something like that. I mean, yeah, it's been, been a, a long time. It's been a long time. And, yeah. and it just, it, it, it is, in my opinion, it is wrong. I, I believe that we should have a minimum wage that is a living wage. And, and you know, if people want to rise above, there's gonna, always going to be some people who are going to rise above. But, Antoine, the reality is that, you know, just 
to use IQ as a measure, okay? We could, we could say physical ability would be another one, but there's not an easy number right. for that. But 100 is the average IQ. That's why it's 100. You know, that means right. that you've got half the population below that and half the population above that, roughly. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in that half the population below that, whether it's mental, you know, uh, lack of ability or whether it's physical lack of ability who can't, you know, who can, just can't go out and get a job doing construction or something like that. You got people who, who can't do, you know, the, 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 the kind of stuff that you and Glenn are talking about. I mean, there's a certain amount of, 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 of privilege in, at, at any level just in, in being, you know, healthy and smart and, 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 and having had some breaks in life. And it seems to me that, that we should respect the dignity of work in and of itself, just at a, as a pure thing to say that, you know, if you work in the sewers, if you work at, at McDonald's, if you work, at, you know, wherever you work, that you should be able to have, you should be able to live and, and with, without government assistance. Um, so anyhow, Antoine, I got to, uh, I'm running out of time. Thank you for the call. Leslie watching Free Speech TV in Rialto, California. Hey, Leslie, what's on your mind today? Oh, hi. Hello. Hey. Um, okay, so my comment was was really in, in response to the previous caller, Glenn, and now this recent caller. I didn't get his name. Antoine. Uh, exactly. So I just learned through this last phase of my life, the last, like, seven, eight years, um, it is it, it, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. You don't. You never know what a person's walk of life was. So I'll give you a little background of my story. Um, <clears throat> I worked, started in my early 20s with the probation department in my county. Okay, I had a little bit of experience and got a couple of courses under my belt. Started on the nocturnal shift. I stayed there for almost 20 years, 17 years and eight months to be exact. I was terminated while on medical leave. Um, and so I went into litigation, wrongfully terminated. Um, preceding my termination, about maybe 10 other women, African-American women, were all terminated or forced into termination, either resigned while under investigation. It was a whole slew of things. But my story specifically, I decided to fight. Mm -hmm. And I was fighting a government entity, which is enormous. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so... Two months after my termination, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, my. I've never seen this in my path. Never thought that this would happen. I have been responsible my entire life. I worked in probation, so I've never broken the law, never been arrested, nothing. Had zero kids, supported my nieces and nephew by an elder sister who suffers from mental illness. <clears throat> so um, my mother was diagnosed. That journey would take her five years. We would go through that for five years. During that time frame, I was constantly assisting my uh, older sister, only sibling, with her children. She has three, an adult uh, niece I have, and then a younger niece and nephew. Um, so I was constantly assisting. At one point, they lived with me for almost a year. Um, and I would just pick up and, you know, step in whenever she went off the rails. And this was continuously by... After a couple of years of, of being out of work, um, the economy was down. In my area, I'm in the poorest uh, county per capita, and I was also in one of the hardest-hit states, California, mm -hmm. so San Bernardino County. Okay, so um, there were several things that Leslie, were— Leslie, we have a little less than a minute before we hit a break. Okay, okay. So there were, there were several things that, that, that transpired. Long story short— um, my youngest niece died tragically of a hanging, okay? Oh um, at, after just turning 11 years old, my mother would die 10 months later. My attorney would tell me in, in mediation that she's taken up with a new firm because of the economy in this, in this state and is now in Nebraska instead of Newport Beach and left my case in the balance. In other words, I lost everything. Just this past Monday... My house that I have lived in since 1999 foreclosed. So it's very difficult. Very yeah. difficult for people. I'm sorry. That don't know your walk of life. Assume I've never lived on government assistance. I've never lived on government assistance because I do not have children. I've worked my hard my whole life. 
I did the right thing, and I'm in this situation. Leslie, I'm so sorry to hear that. I wish you the best. We just, during the break, we had a call from a, uh, from a woman who was telling the story of how she had worked, you know, had a good job for, I think it was 18 years, and, you know, did her work, and then she got laid off, and she was fighting this, and then her mother got diagnosed with breast cancer, and then her niece hung herself, and or died of hanging. I'm, I don't know the circumstances beyond that. And then her mother just died, and now her home is in foreclosure, and she has no job, and it's like, how can we not have compassion for the rest of us? How, how, how can we so glibly say, oh, well, you know, if he doesn't want to eat, he shouldn't, if he doesn't want to work, he shouldn't eat. Or, you know, if he doesn't like his pay, he should just, you know, up and move to another place, get another job. It's so easy to say, right? These, 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 these lines, and that's what they are. They're, they're, they're bumper stickers, they're lines, they're Frank Luntzisms. That the billionaire class feed us through right-wing hate radio and Fox News, that we're not our brother's keepers. In fact, our brothers and sisters, yeah, they're sluggards. They're, they're, they're lazy. They're, you know, especially if, if their skin is a darker color. But even setting aside the race, racial issues, there are plenty of poor white people in the United States as well. Yeah, they're just, they're just, you know, they're just not motivated. And work, you know, people should be paid according to their value. Right, that's a great one. Glenn had tried that on me. People should be paid according to their value. What the hell does that mean? Does that, does that mean that there are people who have little value? That there are people who have so little value that they shouldn't eat? There are people who have so little value that they shouldn't have health care? That they shouldn't have a roof over their heads? Is that really what we're saying here? And if so, who gets to decide who those people are? Oh, well, if we're going to have small government, I guess big corporations are going to decide who those people are. And they're going to do it by saying, okay, you know, I mean, you, know, you can understand business valuing people. You know, if somebody's got a, 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 you know, if somebody's a brain surgeon, they're going to make more money than somebody who's working at McDonald's. I mean, that's obvious and there's a reason for that. But society not valuing people? We as a people, as a country, saying there, you know, there are human beings who just don't have as much value as, you know, and, and, and I'm not arguing everybody should make a brain surgeon's salary. I'm, I'm talking about a minimum standard of living. We have not had a discussion in this country about a minimum standard of living since the Great Society, since Lyndon Johnson. And we really need to have that conversation. Don. In Chicago. Hey, Don, what's on your mind? Don? Hello? Hey, thanks for listening to Hi. WCPT. What's up? You, yeah, I was just called. I, I was. I heard Glenn and I heard the other guy. My thing was, my father, he, he worked at the post office, owned a home, nine kids, my mother raised us all. And you can do that back then. That's the factor that they're not seeing right now. Yeah. Housing prices just the cost of living, period, with one kid. I worked at Macy's, and they would cut me off. I worked commission. So I was incentivized to go sell. But I was cut off at 36 hours, so I wouldn't get health care. And then I asked them, can I stay on the floor? You know, I don't have to be on the clock. No, you can't be on the clock. So I was cut off at a certain point. So even though you want to some jobs, you still they don't allow it. Yeah, yeah. I had a not the last time I was at Macy's, but there's a Macy's a few blocks from here, and and uh, you know I needed to pick up a, a fresh shirt. I had you know I was going on television that night, and I didn't want to go home, and so I just went in and grabbed. I figured you know hey you can always use another shirt. And uh, the guy who checked me out, uh, we got to talk, and it turns out he just graduated from law school, and he can't find a job as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he's working at Macy's. And yeah, it's like... It, 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 and they cut you off at 36 hours so yeah. they don't have to pay health care or 
consider you full time. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, here's a guy and who and, and oh, and, and he and he said he's got a hundred thousand dollars in student debt. Yeah, and uh, and, and, and right now, because right now I I drive for a ride share company because I said let me you know this is just as good as anything else because I make good money doing it. But most of the passengers I get are students, and their student loans are as much as a used car loan. Sure, or more. Like 8%. Yeah, yeah. And so these people like Glenn and that Ant, what's his name, Antoine? Yeah, some, yeah. Don't think, they're not figuring in, they're not baking in what happens with everything else that goes along with, yeah, uh, you could pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but... Guess what? You ain't got no soles on the bottom of your boots. Yeah, yeah, that's a good uh, variation on the metaphor. I have not you know, heard before. They, they're cutting the soles off your boots, and and everybody's treating you know Trump and all these, you know, it's not even just Trump. It's all all these politicians yeah. who don't have people's interests at heart anymore. I think I think you're yeah. right, Don. It's they're they're bowing to the donor class. Like I said, 82 percent of Americans want to raise taxes on rich people, and Trump's budget, the Republicans' budget, cuts taxes on rich people and cuts benefits for the, for working people and and the and the poor. And and that is, in my opinion, not a reflection of American values. But if America keeps voting for Republicans, maybe it is a reflection of American values. Maybe maybe my values are European values. Um, you know. I've, we had uh, uh, a couple of people who uh, donated money to Free Speech TV who I went to lunch with yesterday. They came in here. And uh, one of their kids is living in, in uh, Belgium, uh, you know, working for NATO or one, of the, or one of the European, you know, one of the big organizations that's based out of Belgium. And, and loving it and saying, hey, you know, uh, yeah, we pay high taxes here, but, uh, you know, nobody worries about health care. Nobody worries about vision or dental. Nobody worries about education. Uh, you know, nobody worries about housing. The quality of life is really, really good. And paying, if paying tax, high taxes is the price for that, it's something I'm perfectly willing to do. And wages are high. So it's like, you know, do we want, the, you know, as, as I said, you know, last night Tucker Carlson said, don't let America be like Europe. I think that, you know, we should, we should look at the European countries that are doing what Harry Truman basically taught them, talked them into doing after World War II. And, you know, even, uh, you know, jawbone Germany to put into their constitution that every company that has over a thousand employees, their board of directors has to be 50 percent, you know, labor. Uh, it has to be made up of union representatives, 50 percent of the board of directors. And they have not changed their compensation laws so that their executives are incentivized to send their jobs overseas and to break up their companies and to screw their workers and to steal their pensions and to forbid people from working more than 32 hours so they don't qualify for benefit. I mean, it's just all of that stuff. Europeans look at that stuff and they go, "This is you people are crazy. You, you know, you're, you, the, you Americans, you're, 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 you're suckers to the billionaires. And, you know, I'd have to go for it. I'd say, yeah, absolutely. Don, thank you for sharing your story. And thanks for listening to WCPT. Carl in Nottingham, Maryland. Hey, Carl, what's on your mind? Hey, Tom. Uh, first time talking to you. It's a, a great honor. Thank you for calling. Um, I was listening to a gentleman uh, earlier who's talking about, you know, if you're poor, just get out wherever you can, whenever you can. And I deliver beverages in Baltimore City, and I've delivered to some of the poorest areas of the city. And you look at the people there, and there's no way they can get out. There's no grocery stores. Uh, they buy food at the corner stores where there's, you know, it's marked up. It's way overpriced. And, and it's, and it's crappy no food. Yeah. It's very, very nutritionally poor, full yeah. of sugar. Yeah, these places are called food deserts. Right. There's a lot of them in Baltimore. Yep. But um, one of the words that uh, Republicans uh, bounce around a lot is freedom. And I think that's kind of like a code word because the ultimate in freedom is death. Hmm. That's interesting. If you remember, um, what's his name, in, uh, Mel Gibson in Braveheart, when they were torturing him to death. Mm -hmm. And at the last moment of his life, he cried freedom. Wow. Yeah, I, you know, so, so you think that the Republican Party is a death cult? Well, they, they probably have two or three or four different tier systems for the word freedom. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, you, you broke up there, Carl. You want to say it again? I said I think they have two or three or four different definitions of freedom. Right. But I think each one of those applies to a separate 
class of people. Uh, right, right. Yeah, I, it's, I mean, basically when they say freedom, they mean the freedom of rich people not to pay taxes and the freedom of big corporations to, you know, pollute and damage the earth as they will and, and, uh, and dump. Right, if, if, if you're poor and you, you can't afford health insurance, you're free to die. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that was, I mean, Rand Paul actually, or Ron Paul actually made that point to, what, eight years ago in the Republican primaries. Um, just came right out and said it. <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, in, in response to a question from, as I recall, Anderson Cooper. Anyhow, Carl, excellent point. Thank you. Thank you for the call, and thanks for watching us on YouTube.